Hi friends, welcome to Unsell. So today is the 80th episode in the space series. So yeah, we already reached the 80th episode. So today in space we are going to discuss about a type of celestial body, and that is the type of star, which is not exactly a star, but uh, just a transition between a star and a planet. And these are known as brown dwarfs, also known as failed stars. They are just stars. who don't have enough mass to become a star planets like jupiter yes but jupiter is not actually counted as a dwarf dwarf i mean brown dwarf sorry okay so now let's start let's take a normal star in black next red is going to be a brown dwarf which are pretty smaller compared to stars and last and finally Jupiter for scale because uh, the mass is just counted in Jupiter masses. Yes. Okay. So let's start. So to for any celestial body, a gaseous celestial body, to be a star, it must have at least eighty Jupiter masses to become a star. Stars are classified as they can burn thing. That means they can turn here. hydrogen into helium they can do proper nuclear fusion so these are the stars even red dwarfs are also counted into the spectrum yes so now let's go to other planets like jupiter itself so let's go so planets like jupiter which have a bit less mass compared to dwarf planets i mean brown dwarfs and actual stars these planets things they are actually counted as planets by the iau so these things the planets only the gaseous planets are counted as sub dwarfs sub brown dwarfs to be exact they have enough mass i mean they are gaseous that means they are made in the exact same way as brown dwarfs and just stars but they don't have enough mass to do nuclear fusion yes if anything can do nuclear fusion it's pretty much a star if it is gaseous that is and then let's go to brown dwarfs so brown dwarfs can are classified as types of failed stars which can burn guess it deuterium which is an isotope of hydrogen yes that means do nuclear fusion with deuterium but they cannot do nuclear fusion with hydrogen hydrogen needs a lot more energy compared to this fusing to deuterium into helium yes because hydrogen is just one proton and we need a lot more mass to turn it into helium meanwhile deuterium just two of them boom a new particle yes a new nucleus to be exact yes so next the range of mass inside brown dwar- brown dwarfs is taken that wait 13 to 80 jupiter masses this is the symbol for jupiter masses it is just an m followed by an j yes so to for any planet like thing to become a brown dwarf it must have 13 to 80 times more mass than jupiter if it has less than 13 jupiter masses like jupiter itself and is gaseous it is counted as a sub dwarf i mean sub brown dwarf yes so simple now let's see some of the different types of brown dwarfs so let's give some wait let's all the space let's now it's green so there are three main sub class i mean four main sub classifications of the stars based on the i mean dwarfs based on their spectrum yes so turn 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 m l t y yes so even stars have similar spectrums yes if you see a spectrum graph of every star you will also see these three four letters and these letters are also used in counting of brown dwarfs as well like means brown dwarf light emissions yes so here m is the most brightest yes brown dwarfs which have the m spectrum range are pretty new they are the youngest of the youngest yes So next, the L ones, they're like teenagers, nothing else, because they're a bit more dimmer than the M's. If a brown dwarf is older, 
the more dimmer it is and if it is more younger the more brighter it is simple Lo- logical sense okay next t it is like the middle aged people like 20 to 30 years not exactly middle aged but just adults not younger adults nor old adults yes so they also have a bit more dimmer than the teenagers here but still they are pretty much visible and last and finally the grandparents they are the oldest of the old yes so they are very very dim some of these why spectrum star i mean why spectrum black brown dwarfs can be literally black in color they can't emit any light whatsoever some of them not all of them yes so now let's see some of other properties of brown dwarfs so first brown dwarfs do not always produce their light in the visible spectrum because they don't have a lot of energy so they make their light that means they produce the light in the infrared in the infrared wavelength which needs a le- lot less energy to produce than just the visible light spectrum you can see my video about ele- the electromagnetic spectrum about this okay yes that is a very important thing about them so the closest system of system with a brown dwarf is the lanhart system yes it is the third closest system to our solar system as it is after the proxima centauri system just the centauri system and after that this in second place is the binary star and after that there's a binary system of two stars i mean two black dwarfs i mean sorry sorry brown dwarfs to be exact yes so yeah and also last and finally they can also be in different colors not just brown yes so the if they like in the m spectrum that means yeah in the m spectrum they are pretty young they could be in colors ranging from orange to red yes meanwhile if they are at the end of their life span they could be not even visible or even if they are visible like when they are at the t spectrum they are like in magenta and brown colors yes so these brown dwarfs are not always brown in color but they are pretty colorful <laughs> not as colorful as the rainbow though yes see so, yeah, you this for today about brown dwarfs bye